And one of the things you said is it's, it's not that, uh, you know, when you hear about it, it's not your first thing you're saying. You get a little nervous about having to get in the door. That's not what we're here to talk about. What we're really here to talk about is what, um, what the Department of State see as badges and, uh, and how, uh, what that means to us. So it's more of a conversation uh, as to what, um, how we want to. Are you okay? Yeah, here you are. Now that's right. It's pretty loud. How about now? Can you, everybody, give someone give me a thumbs up or something. You can hear no? Well, maybe hold on to this. That's the part. Yeah, it's just, it wasn't taking you out. Okay, I don't mind. Feedback. All right. Can you hear, me? Carol? Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here close to the mic then. <laughs> so anyway, I'll start again. Um, evangelism. What uh, Pastor said. Um, it usually has a kind of a bad you know a bad connotation. People hear that word and and worry that they're going to be asked to go door to door. I, I know that's kind of one of those things that I think about. But this is more about um, having a conversation with the people of the congregation here as far as um, what does evangelism mean to, to Augustine State? What, do, what is it we want to do? How, how do we want to present our to the community? Um, and, um, you know, last night, uh, my wife and I, last night, my wife and I met with Lynette Brennan and uh, her husband, Dick, and uh, when, I, when we met, we met to talk about what we were gonna talk about today. And the first question she asked me is, so what is it we wanna say? And I looked at her and told her, honestly, I'm not really sure what, what it is we wanna say uh, because there, it's such a big question. What, what is evangelism and what does it mean? Uh, so it's not something that any one of us can tell you what evangelism because evangelism means something different to everybody so that's why this has to be a conversation uh, with the people from the congregation uh, to really uh, you know kind of evolve what evangelism means to Augustine. day so um, with that I'm Phyllis Bob Beals Oops. yes we have uh, questions or Okay, well, we've met several times. We've had two really good meetings, one in November and then one in December. And with, with a decent crowd, you have in your hands uh, copies of the minutes from both of those meetings. We also had 18 people who went caroling with us in December uh, from babies to other older people. <laughs> older babies. <laughs> Uh, the whole spectrum um, across the street in our neighborhood. And it was a wet evening, but it was a lot of fun. So what we thought we would do is we would start with some of the comments that we had from our last meeting in December. And Pastor asked the question, what keeps you coming back to August Day? As you can see, there were uh, responses all over the board. Uh, Luther Gill, we all had a good laugh at that one. Soup supper, people noticing new members or visitors. I think that's one thing that August Day has always done extremely well is when you see a new face in the crowd at church, uh, people go up and introduce themselves and ask who they are. And are they visiting? Have they just moved to the area? Um, greeting, helping, need to develop community, which I think is more what we're going to talk about today. Good preaching, sermons, faith formation, Bible studies. We're pretty unique, I think, in the area for having an adult forum. And that's normally been something we've done every single week between services. Uh, most uh, other organizations do education for children, but not always for adults. And I think that's something that we've done extremely well here at Office State. 
with our adult forums, uh, topics across the board, not just specifically religion, but about community and about other things that are of interest and of concern. So adult forum is pretty unique here. Relationship building, um, people came in search of grace, warmth of the people, inclusivity, social justice out outreach, which we've done more over the last couple of years, humor, family purpose, feeling welcome, and the sense of community here on this day. Is there anything that you'd like to add to that list? Community. Community, okay. Yeah. That's that's really important, and that's kind of one of the things that Lynette and I were talking last night. It's uh, you know the we've sent we've gotten a lot of new people in the congregation, and I think we we all feel like we've been uh, away from everyone for so long that we really need to, to come back uh, to you know to be together again, uh, and whether that means like a, a pancake breakfast or a soup supper, or even just, uh, you know, meeting with small groups uh, at individual homes. A, that has been presented as something, as an idea to do. And I, and I understand the hesitancy, you know, with uh, the COVID, you know, uh, all that that's going on. But I think um, we need to have the conversation now so that, you know, when we can get to that point, when we do get to that point, we will get there. That we can um, get, you know, have uh, have meals together, and if that means we have to put the tables in here, you know, four or five tables in here, we have plenty of other places in the church uh, that we could um, spread out a little bit, so people feel comfortable. And and I think as far as um, you know, before we can really reach out, we need to reach in and, and, and reconnect with the people here at the church reconnect and also connect with the new people that, that have joined us. Danny had, thank you for joining us this morning, Danny. Danny had a really great idea about small groups. Would you like to share that with us? Well, no, I just kind of like, uh, we kind of talked about it for a couple of months. Um, small group, uh, Lynn and I stepped, Lynn and I stepped forward and said we do this to start with. When we meet at our homes, uh, maybe four to six couples or singles or whatever, not more than six, eight or 10 people maybe at most, because small group with the idea of everything that she's talking about there right at the very top. And I haven't been part of all that, but where are we going as a mission? You know, that's our kind of our focus. So if we sit up a small group and decide what's important to us, and that's the little group, and then those leaders take that to a monthly meeting and say, okay, this is what our group is thinking about. It not only connects us a little bit closer individually, you know, particularly with people that we don't know, but uh, in the bigger sense of things, you know, we're going to find out what, where does this church really want to go? One of the biggest mantras that I've kind of taken up lately is, what do we want to do as important, as opposed to what can we afford to do? So what does this church really want to do? We do a lot of great things. We know that. But let's focus on something. That's what maybe these small groups could be all about. That's the only thing that I guess I would offer. And that would almost, the idea behind that would be like a monthly meeting for uh, an afternoon at some coffee shop at somebody's home for a glass of wine, a cup of tea, uh, breakfast. Uh, I like the pancake breakfast idea when I join your group. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's what I do. Thank you. So over and over in council and in, in conversation with people, we continue to hear that we need to maybe heal ourselves first and, and start with our own community and get back the sense of a community that we've always had here at Octus Day. And so how do we do that? Uh, and people keep saying breakfast. And we know that that is the common denominator is when we're all together, you know, we've got eight tables in here and 70 people and everybody's got their masks off. We can't do that right now, but maybe we can do it in a smaller fashion where there are just a few tables here. There's a couple in the community room. There's two out in the narthex and people who are coming are confident or, or comfortable sitting with the people that they sit with, but we're not, you know, gathered in one great big place. And have a breakfast is something we've done as long as we've been here for 40 years. 
Um, and something I think that people continue to miss that sense of community and that togetherness. But there should be other ways. And Danny's conversation about small groups where you're with just, you know, maybe eight or 10 people in a home or wherever you choose to be. And I think that's something that we definitely, and it might be that we start with, Bob, you and Cindy had suggested that you might be interested in hosting. Right. Um, Denny and Ann are, Dick and I would, and maybe we post that and, and we say this is a new program and then as people come or get invited, um, others might step forward. We'd like to have the groups spread out through the community so that you could maybe go to the one that's closest to your home. But it's an opportunity to get together and to talk about things that are happening in the church or in our community. It's another way to share ideas of how we might be able to engage in the community. Um, the caroling was a fun first step. The Kids Night Out, uh, we're hoping will continue for the next five, six months and get that rolling with uh, something that we can offer to the daycare or the preschool and then also to the community. Um, ways that we can be visible in the community. Uh, community gardens have been a uh, suggestion. And we know that there's a need and that their fish is interested in helping us pursue a community garden. So that would be a way that we can meet uh, the community here on our site. So there are lots of ways. What we'd like to ask this morning is, do you have questions? Do you have suggestions? Are there ways that you see that we can both involve our congregation back together again safely and more ways to be in the community? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that uh, when we started talking about community, we uh, ended up our own community. I, I, I would uh, suggest that a definition of evangelism uh, is simply sharing God's love with the community. Outside of. It's outside of ourselves. That's great. Out, outreach into the community uh, and you know, that, that's, that's a difficult one. Uh, often uh, times, as Danny said, one of the first questions, well, can we afford to do that? Uh, and and I, would, I would suggest that's the very last question we need to ask, can, can we afford? First, we have to, what do we think we should be doing? Uh, and then as we, that develops the uh, uh, enthusiasm where the money comes forth. We are not poor people. We are not a poor congregation. Uh, we, we are so concerned about finances for the future. Uh, and what solves that is when we get involved in the mission. That's excellent, Daryl. Thank you. Well, one of the things that uh, kind of came out of, of our uh, meetings last night was um, something that, that I did a lot of when I first joined this congregation. We were very involved with Habitat for Humanity, also very involved with uh, something called uh, Paint Tacoma Beautiful. Uh, and those are programs uh, that are something that talk about community time. I mean, we really got to know each other when we're out there <coughs> painting homes and <coughs> building homes and those kinds of things. You're, you're shoulder to shoulder with the people that you worship with and the families that either are in need or, um, you know, or, or just, um, yeah, the, the people who are in need there. And we have the ability to help them beautify their home, fix their home. Um, and it's a really, um, uh, it's a very good thing to do for our community as for ourselves as a congregation that is also an outreach into the community. And that's just kind of one of the ideas that I was thinking of you know, going forward, so I'd love to get back into that. So if anybody have other ideas, I'd love to hear. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of a movie in the crowd. Um, I get from all the churches I belong to the, the desire to rekindle that community here. But I like what Daryl said about evangelism is really being out in the community. 
um, the racial justice thing is one of the things that caught our we saw you guys oh yeah signs on the road. yeah um, <clears throat> and at that martin luther king jr celebration thing last thursday uh, i've been here long enough that i right, recognize a whole bunch of other state That's names awesome. yeah. um, but <clears throat> The point of what I wanted to say is we go out there and we say, well, we've got to share God's love, but we're terrified of knocking on the door and saying, you know, I think that the first step is being out there in places like Habitat or racial justice stuff and listening. Um, that rather than I'm here to tell you what I need you to know, I'm here to listen and see what is it you need, what are you seeking, where is your pain point, what you know. What do you know? And then that opens up that opportunity to say, you know, one of the most important things for me is connecting to God. And um, and that's the, that's how it supports me. And eventually, well, and by the way, where I can do that, you know, I don't like this other state. But I think listening, being where people want to be, being out in the community and listening to what they need is an important first step. That's right. Uh, on Friday, uh, I drove down to the home to the senior center for one of the lunches. And one person, John, said, Well, I just met one of your people from on the stage. <laughs> so, but the point is, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that a number of us are involved with nonprofits, they get to know you. They find out you're from on the stage, so there's already a connection. Uh, the fact that we had a speaker here, what was it, a month or so ago from the city center at home, and we really made a strong impression on it. What I heard from it later. Yeah. And there's a lot of nonprofits out there that could use our help. And uh, uh, that was another thing we talked about. There's um, the uh, Northwest. Northwest uh, for, uh, Furniture Bank, <clears throat> which is uh, there in Tacoma. And they, uh, the company that I work, work for, we do every uh, like quarterly through the year, send a group of people there to put together furniture. If you guys have ever put together a key of furniture, it's lots of fun. <clears throat> but it's uh, one of those things that it's a nonprofit organization. The furniture is usually, uh, a lot of it's donated uh, from Ikea, a lot of it is just donated from people from the community that is uh, cleaned and put back uh, in their um, <clears throat> in their showroom to have people come in that like either lost their home or just just into their home and they have don't have the means to furnish like for beds or even to be able to sit down at a kitchen table with the family and those kinds of things uh, are really. Uh, uh, a great thing that we could do as a congregation, uh, and it's a, that could be a very small group. Uh, I'm look, I'm going to look into that because I I've been involved with it uh, where I work, so that I can find out the particulars as to whether or not we could do that right now. Uh, so that, that's just one another another idea that, that came out of our meeting last night. So what we'd like to do, <clears throat> excuse me, and I don't know. We're probably not able to do that today, but what we would like to do in addition to, you know, trying to find ways to once again, gather us here at August Day and connect us by small groups or a possibility of breakfast coming down the pike uh, when we can safely do that. We also would like to identify maybe one or two projects that our church can get involved with uh, moving forward. And and I don't know what that is. And we're open to suggestions on what that is. I don't know that we can take on, you know, five or six projects. I think if we could concentrate on one or two that those interested could participate from our community. Um, I also understand that there's a gig harbor website for uh, organizations to plug in things that are happening in their church. And I need to investigate that because that's something that we could also participate in and let people know like our kids night out uh, functions of those sorts that we're doing already that people can plug into from the community that they're not just listed for obvious day uh, people the community garden is probably one of the most promising ideas i think we have 
that a lot of people in this church might be very interested in participating in because they're gardeners. And maybe you don't have a gardening space anymore. Well, that would be something that you could participate here at church. So we're open to suggestions. How do you see us? Girl. Girl. Yeah, Girl. yeah uh, one, one of the possibilities uh, for dealing with it, I think is the most difficult problem in our society today is dealing with homelessness. And th there's a possibility I think that we could get together with a group of churches and actually begin doing some physical things to make sure that people don't have to sleep in tents out in the woods someplace. Um, uh, you know, uh, may maybe our property isn't the place where that could be done, but you know, maybe it is, or maybe with the, uh, involvement of the larger religious community, uh, we could really do some profound things. Okay, so other churches in our area. We are currently doing that already with pastor and the youth group. We'll be meeting uh, in two weeks, I think, uh, with a group of four or five. Pastor, can you speak to that? We've got uh, already a, a community of churches participating in that. Yeah, sorry, my video is not working for some reason. Um, yeah, we're partnering with uh, St. John Episcopal, there it goes, St. John Episcopal and Gig Harbor United Methodist and Fox Island UCC and, um, what's the other one? No, yeah, those those four of us. Um, we four pastors got together and talked about, is there a way that we could, none of us have a ton of youth and it's really hard to plan a youth thing and have one or two people show up that doesn't make anybody want to come. And so we figured if we can do something together, maybe we can have something that um, we could get a critical mass of youth at. So we'd planned to start actually this weekend, but because of COVID decided to postpone till next month. But um, yeah, on the 6th, we're going to try that for the first time. And the plan is to do that monthly through the end of school and um, see how that goes. Um, which I will also mention um, part of the vision for this is to get a small group of folks, about two people from each congregation together to be kind of a board that oversees this so we can kind of talk about it. But if anybody has any particular... Um, interest in working with youth, uh, let me know, please. Thank you. Marilyn, I, I hear your name about the community uh, website for Gig Harbor. Do you have any more information about that? Uh, <laughs> Sorry to call it. You know. <laughs> I'm in my bathroom, so I won't show the beauty of it all. <laughs> Um, uh, the Gig Harbor, Gig Harbor Now is the online newspaper, which was started by uh, Pat Lance and a few other people, and uh, they are they are growing, and it's a good way to to uh, let people know in the community what's going on. It's also a good way to find out what's happening in the community. So Gig Harbor Now. So if you just Google that. Uh, you'll find it. You can you can it's subscribe. Online. It's online. It's solely online, um, and they do breaking news also. But there's a whole community uh, page where you there are different sections of so that you can find out what's going on in the community. So it's I think it's going to be a growing important resource. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. I was just thinking, speak up, please. With the gate driver now, I was thinking, I don't know if any of you have had a car now with the neighborhood places where they'll send out a link to you to uh, post all sorts of stuff about the neighborhood. Fox um, Island has one. Right. Yeah. Whether churches do that. Like you're talking about the youth group that there have five churches involved. If you have five churches get together and say, you know, we really wanted to um, paint to go on. Is anyone else interested? 
and then you could maybe draw in folks from other communities, other churches. So again, again, going back to gathering and, and communicating with other churches in our area right. for functions. Even if they have an interest in this, because like you're saying, some of these projects seem overwhelming to us, but if you had a larger group, they could draw different people in from that land. So like reaching out uh, electronically, you're saying, uh, put our presence out there uh, with other people online to, to see where yeah. we've got interest. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Austin, Austin, oh. Oh, that's, oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's a little yellow now. False name. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments or questions? Any suggestions? I think as far as community outreach, it seems like we need to identify what the community needs. And that's something we're missing even now. We're talking about things that we feel that we can do or that already exist with others. Are those really meeting the needs of people in our community? So how, how can we get out in the broader community? Or I know Robbie brought up last week, you know, maybe there isn't as big a need in some ways here. Maybe we have to look to Tacoma. Or, or some other place where there's more need. Maybe that is a place that we're being called to go to at times too. And a nonprofit would help us with that. Yes. I, I agree with that. That's a great, great uh, comment, George. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, this will kind of fall along identifying this natural need, but where we came from, our church out that all of the places that offered meals to people who needed a meal, none of them served free coffee. And mm -hmm. so we formed this and we called it our baby red. Um, managed to get nine different teams, not all of them who were part of our church, um, so that nobody had to be there every Sunday of the year cooking a meal for somebody. Um, and uh, we just came in, we cooked a meal, we served for an hour, and um, cleaned it up and we were gone and we didn't have to go back for two months because some other team would be doing it. The ninth team we did the fifth Sundays of the month and most did. Um, and uh, it was really, it was a well attended program. We had a lot of people there. There was one family that had 12 kids and um, when we were serving near Christmas weekend, they walked in and every kid was carrying their little violin or whatever and they played Christmas music for everybody else who ate and then ate at the end. Wow. Um, some of them had gardens and they donated garden food to us. Uh, it would stay to help clean up. It, it just, it, for that particular community at that particular time, because we did identify a specific need, it, it worked really well. Uh, you know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a massive commitment for any, you know, well, and the comment is that they, we have this beautiful kitchen. Yes. You know, we have this beautiful kitchen that is empty now. Uh, and, and we have a beautiful building. Uh, how are we going to use that in the community? What can we do to uh, be useful? So, George, to your point, and I mean, I know we have people of need in our community. People assume we take our own, we don't, but we do. Um, and you know, we, we offer our parking lot for safe parking for people who need it overnight. We don't currently have anybody on site right now, but it's something, it's a program that we participate in, if you're not aware, um, that we do. So, and Pastor organizes that with sources who know of these people and they come to them and then they reach out to Pastor and others in the community that do that. So, Bob, anything you had to comment? Um, I think the, you know, I started this, this, this is a conversation that is, needs to be ongoing. And I think, oh, you know, by getting people to, to show up and also people online uh, to have this conversation and, uh, you know, share our ideas and also um, come up with new ideas. I think this is, we're on the right path. This is a conversation that we needed to have for a while. And, really glad to be a part of part of this. So the next step is we have to take action. We can't keep talking about what can we do. Yeah, Ronnie, 
Well, I was just going to follow up on what Neil said about the Okay, so when I did talk to the lady, uh, beyond my right. anyway, I just, she said, well, we want money. I said, well, we wanted something besides money. <laughs> so <laughs> she said, well, a couple of things they need. They, they have tried to get um, a couple of programs going, but COVID has been quite difficult. But one thing they did do have is bingo. <laughs> and, and I guess no matter what the diseases are out there, we have for bingo. So we, said, we need prizes for bingo. And one thing we have nothing left of in our kitchen, which we have quite a bit of food, they have zero sugar. It gives away all the sugar for the holidays. And they also need uh, all kinds of sanitary uh, things like shampoo, what, what have you, and that department. They're very low on those kinds of things. So, so she was very forthcoming and gave some suggestions. I haven't taken it to any committee, but she seemed to be a very um, uh, agreeable person who will kind of roll with what you want to do and tell you what they need. And so would you send uh, Bob and I just an email of uh, contact and organization and then some needs. Okay. Or I can do that too. Okay, okay. perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. perfect. Because that's some place in our local community that we could help out possibly. And that could be, it might be that as we identify things like that, we send it out to the group and people who are moved, just like with our toilet paper drive for fish and other things, that if you're interested, you can participate. And it sounds like they have volunteer opportunities as well. So, in fact, I've been trying to get the uh, executive director of the mustard seed to come out and do a presentation. But somehow, George has tried to somehow be in trouble getting a hold of him. But uh, so he would have a lot of ideas how we can assist the, the mustard seed. But would you explain for the group what the mustard seed is? Oh, the mustard seed uh, project is a nonprofit in Key Center, and their main goal is to assist aging on the Key Peninsula. So um, they do a variety of things. Uh, there are four or five volunteers who uh, are at the desk every day of the week, uh, receiving calls from people who need assistance or need assistance with their parents or whatever. Uh, provide rights to uh, to the doctor going to the grocery store, that sort of thing. Uh, I know people have gone as far as uh, Seattle, to the VA hospital, uh, assistance with Medicare. Uh, right now, as you, as you heard in that presentation some time ago, uh, must see uh, has started the construction of assisted living right across the street. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, they also provide kinds of classes or social events at the building, which again, of course, has been rather restricted due to the uh, pandemic. Don't they provide meals from time to time too? Uh, not as well at special events like Christmas. They used to do that, anyway. yeah. uh, but not on the, on the regular basis. They might in the future want, once the pandemic is over or live with the pandemic. But again, they've got a large commercial kitchen. They also have back, um, COVID vaccine. Yes, but periodically, yes, yes. Wonderful. So there's an opportunity right in our own community, again, that, that we're aware of and it could provide opportunities for our congregation right. to assist them. And then the Angel Guild. Uh, so the Angel Guild uh, raises funds by sale of clothing, uh, a variety of things. And they then... Uh, uh, they give all the proceeds back. So, so the pro yes, so all the proceeds go back to the other nonprofits on the Key Peninsula. 
So if you can get, like, like Lynette said, if you can get us information yeah. as far as the contacts and everything, that, that would yeah, be Yeah, the great. Angel Guild does this through a thrift shop that they have. Right, right. Ronnie, right. um, just a crazy idea. I have a lot of them. <laughs> um, you know, um, I see the building where our fish going up pretty quickly. And I'm wondering, that's going to be quite a big project for them to move everything from their old building to the new building. And I was... Um, Thinking maybe we could um, offer our assistance when the time comes. It's a, it's a one time, but, um, and we might enlist some of those other churches that um, we can drive down and they'll go up the next hill behind the um, Dr. Carlin's dog place. So you all know where it is? Where the new one is? Yeah. Oh, where's the old going to be? Where? The, the, the old one is at the Eagles, and yeah. the new one is just, I guess you would say, 900 yards east of there? Uh -huh. Close. Uh -huh. Same area. Same area. Not exactly a direct road from here to there, but but not far. And I don't know what their plans are, but Jan Cohen will be able to help with that. That's, that's going to be a big deal at the Eagles. Edith, did you have something? Well, I was just like somebody mentioned. The thing that what the need saw is there any way we could even survey our congregation of people that are not present here? And I think there's a lot of healing that needs to be made. I know there's some people because of all the deaths and so on that they might have ideas of what needs to take place. You know, and within our church also, and or, or even the day to day, I don't think we're hearing. We will hear from the larger, maybe or maybe some anonymous type survey where they can have mm -hmm. any any. We're having a hard time hearing. Can we repeat those questions, people please? Have people who need anything, mm -hmm. or who some people that. Somebody said to me, I don't know about the fact and I, I don't know what, what the problem was, but you know, there might be voices that we are not hearing. Well, I was thinking, I know we have a voice in here, but I was thinking, you know, Hang on a second, let me bring up my computer so that the people online can hear you. This is just off the cuff as well, um, but I was thinking, um, it might be interesting if people, if there would be some folks who'd be interested in having a uh, kind of a book group where you could read a book and discuss it, but on um, how to uh, well get through times or spiritual direction or uh, getting closer to God or how to pray or, or things like that, whether people would find that to be uh, helpful or meaningful. Could I make an observation? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to uh, all these ideas, and I think these are really great ideas. But a pattern I'm noticing is that um, we are focusing a lot on what more can we be doing. And I don't think that's a bad question. Um, but I'm thinking about the conversations I've had with Bob Volbrocht at Fish lately. And every time I talk to him, he tells me about um, all the things we're already doing, like that we, that on you stay has a reputation, at least in his mind of already doing so much. And I'm what I find myself wondering as we have this conversation, uh, if when we talk about how can we invite people into what we're doing, if we, it, it almost seems to me like we have a sort of a congregational attitude that we're not doing enough. And if we do more then people will come more that we need to be worthy of that. Um, and I wonder, you know, even if we start doing all of these great ideas, it kind of leaves us in the same place right now, which is how do we invite people into what we're doing? And I wonder if maybe that's a question worth exploring. Um, the stuff that we're already doing, instead of trying to think of how we can be more sufficient to people, like, what are we doing to actually invite people in? Somebody earlier mentioned, um, you know, listening to the community and figuring out what needs are already there. Um, 
what are we doing there? You know, that, cause that sort of thing comes from conversation and actually relationship and getting to know people. And I feel like maybe that is more the real question of evangelism when it comes down to that is how are we connecting with the people outside of our congregation rather than what are we doing that they can see? Um, two things. One, we have a member of this congregation who is very, um, I think, probably more in touch with what's needed in the community than we are, and that's Alma and her brother Ken. Um, it would take some time, but if someone could sit down and um, have a conversation with Alma, about what needs are easy to find in this community and what needs are not, that could really inform us in a very personal way. Um, secondly, to Marilyn's comment about spiritual formation, um, I have had two, well, I, I'm a certified spiritual director. I haven't done a lot of it because about the time I was going to step into it, our um, COVID hit and we moved. <laughs> So, um, but that is something that is very much in my heart. Uh, Phil has had some of that training as well. He's a really good teacher. Uh, so if that's a track that people want to pursue, that might be something that we could, um, for our own congregation, put together, is how do we let these hard times transform us? Well, Pastor, I like the comment, how do we invite people in? That's a really good question. Any comments on that? How do we let people know we're here? How do we let people know we're here? What do we, what do, we do as a community enough? What are we doing to the community to let people know we're in the community forest? And so how do we let people know, hey, we're here, this is what we do, this is what we're about? Um, how, how do we break this idea and conception that people have that we're, because we have candles, we're stuck up snobs, but actually because we have candles, we're more fun. How do we let people know we're the fun church to join because we don't judge you because we believe in grace. We want you who you are. I mean, I've said it a lot of times. If I have to pretend I'm someone that I'm not just to be in a church, I'm in the wrong church. I'm who I am. And yes, I'm a troublemaker and I skirt the edge. But you know what? Sometimes that's fun. How do we have fun while doing God's work for the community? I wish I had answers for that. <laughs> Is there anything else that anybody wanted to, to share, to add? Um, I'm not trying to reiterate what Debbie hang, said. Hang on a second. I'm trying to reiterate what Debbie said about um, the need for spiritual uplifting at this time, not because people, well, yes, because people have had great losses, but because the community in general has had a great loss. and. Now we've been zapped with another situation, which which makes us know it's going to continue a long time. And I I've been I've been reading this book for uh, a grief group that I go to for Orchard, and this was um, one of the comments that uh, Kubler Ross made was when there's a huge um, pandemic like we have right now when everyone is in the same boat and everybody needs to uh, uh, talk about their losses. And so I think that um, we could do that for our own people and we could invite other people to come too because it's such a universal need right now. Marilyn, did you have something? Thank you. Oh, or Marty, this is this is better. I was just thinking, I don't know whether the local um, firefighters, whether they uh, do BLS classes and PALS classes or anything, if they would need a place to host them, then Edna's name would be a good spot 
um, especially in Pell's class because of the neighborhood across the street. Is for pediatric um, uh, care, you know, for emer emergency care, or that kind of thing. And otherwise, the all has its basic life support, but they also have a separate program, I believe, for kids. Well, not sure quite how to wrap this up. <laughs> We've had a lot of really good suggestions and good ideas. Carol. Carol, yes. I just wonder if we as a congregation need to be spending more money or more time talking about who we are and who is attracted to this congregation. Over the last year, we've had a number of new members join. Who are they? They're not families of young children. Um, why is that happening? And is that a good thing that we can build on? Um, just who are we? Why are we attracting the members that we've gotten in the last year or two? Why are we not getting young families? And, and just have that honest discussion with each other. Maybe that will help us find out what direction we should go. That's a great idea. That goes back to uh, the whole conversation that we need to start. And I think also, um, you know, look at ourselves a little closer. And that, that means um, the idea of having, uh, uh, you know, time to share together, whether that's a meal or, or things like this. And this is, a, this is a great venue for people to share the, their thoughts and ideas. But it's so much more, um, so much more comfortable to sit at a table with somebody and have an open conversation. So I'm hoping that we're, we're thinking about putting on the schedule uh, late February, early March uh, uh, to have the um, pancake breakfast kind of thing. So it would be between services. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try to put down the schedule and make it so that we can, you know, have. Um, conversation around a meal because I think that's really important. So, does anybody have anything else to add? That was one item that we were talking about with the small groups, <laughs> with the small groups and homes, was to have an opportunity for people to talk about mission, talk about who we are, talk about. Um, the needs of the congregation and then also out in the community if that's possible. So again, the small groups look for information on that coming up very soon. In our text, <clears throat> excuse me, um, got a little tickle here. Um, opportunity to, to sign up to go to a small group and, and, and have that conversation. And I think it's the first way, Carol, to uh, begin that. And also then also talk about the pastor how do we invite people in and, and start that conversation as well? At the risk of putting anyone on the spot, um, Bob, Bob or somebody mentioned, you know, we've had, we've had several new folks join lately, and I know a few of them are in this conversation. I wonder if you might feel comfortable just briefly sharing how you found On You Stay and what made you decide you wanted to join? Before we, uh, we moved here, our pastor in Utah uh, was, became aware of Pastor Seth. And once we told him where we were moving, those would then call this guy. And um, which I guess the Lutheran world is fairly small. And everybody knows her about it. Um, so even before we moved here, we came and stopped in and checked talked with, with uh, Pastor Seth for about an hour one morning, uh, a year before we moved here. Uh, but one of the things that, that really attracted us, attracted me anyway, to to uh, to come here is is the um, this, the forum, where you have uh, basically an adult education and ongoing faith formation, because as Deb said, that's something that's very important to us. 
and the opportunity to be in and to participate in those kind of conversations that are shaping our spirituality. That's that's why uh, I appreciate it. Early on the talk during this one. So um, we're kind of genetically encoded Lutherans, and so the first thing we did was Google Lutheran churches. Um, but then I think one of the things that caught our eye was was the racial justice people with their signs um, down along. Uh, yeah. Um, but then once we got here, um, you know, the the quality of the worship services, um, the text study group, the theology on tap, the forums, the, the like what you're seeing, the, the opportunities to dig in and learn are probably what attracted us most. But I also think that, that that's something, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, I was going to say, Something that's already, someone who's already been involved in church and is already probably on the road is attracted to that. Um, theology on tap is talking about the emerging church and how the church is going through some radical changes because of the radical changes in society over the last 40 or 50 years. And it's really interesting, but I think that that's part of what addresses why aren't the young people here. Um, but for us, the music, the sermons, the Bible studies, and the friendliness of the people. We had a crowd around us the first step the day we walked in here. And it was really cool. That's been going on a long time because that's kind of what got my wife and I to join this church 20 plus years ago. Um, I think that I'm pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, unless anybody has anything additional to add? Uh, oh, here we go. I think um, I'm stirring the pot a little bit here. Uh, to get to Carol's question about you know, who are we, um, we might also ask why are we? And the challenge is, I don't remember where I read this, but but if you ask yourself the why question five or six times, you will, and you're really honest with yourself. You will eventually get to the core issue of why you're doing what you're doing. And so if if our, the answer to our why <clears throat> is we need the money, we need more people in the church because we need the money, that's a poor motivation for inviting people into the kingdom of God. If our why is because we're bored. Uh, that again is a pretty poor motivation, but we're looking for a sense of purpose. We're looking for a sense of purpose. Why? Because we're looking for a sense of purpose. Um, but but as both individually and as a congregation, we ought to be asking that question. And you ask yourself that question enough, you get all the way down to the bottom of really what's our motivation? Why why is evangelism an issue? Why are we doing this? And if it's so we can grow ourselves as a, as a, as a number of uh, seats in the, in, the, in the chairs from the pews, I don't know that that's a good motivation. If it's because, if that why at the very bottom is because we really love God and we want to share what we know about God, then that gives us an answer, uh, kind of a direction of where to go to meet that why. So, I don't know, Carol, <laughs> Carol may disagree with me, but that, that's what peaked for me when she made the point. Yeah, I think that the why is that we want to share what we know about God. And what do we have to do to be good with God? And we do it because we want to, because we know God's already done it for us. And I think that's the, we do this for God because everything that we can do, it's already, been, it's already done for us. 
We are here because we are God's love children. Yes, we want to learn. What, why? And we want to know God better. But it's it's a strange relationship when we can't do anything to better our relationship with God and just let us love him. Just let him love us and us love each other. And I think the love thing is with your love to him. <coughs> Well, I think I think we're about wrapped up. Uh, one of the things for me, obviously, I needed to share this congregation because for all these years, it's been such a difficult part of our life and our kids' lives. And uh, our grandkids have been baptized and, and uh, are here uh, or have been here. And so that is something that's precious to us that we would like to share with others. And, uh, and the best way to do that is what we're talking about today, how to do that. So watch for more information, um, watch for hopefully an upcoming breakfast at some point. Um, if you have any ideas to share, anything you think of after today, please uh, you can uh, email Bob and I or Cindy in the office and she will forward it on. Um, Whatever we decide, it will take all of you to participate. Um, you know, not everybody in every single thing, but it's not something that I'm going to be doing alone. Bob's going to be doing alone. We're not forming a committee. We keep telling you that. We promise it's not a committee, but it's a it's a way of action for all of the congregation um, to participate in in some fashion. So. Thank you so much for your ideas today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those of you online. We appreciate the participation and uh, enjoy the service.